Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shell Craft One in my old barn door. And today we're going to make some pockets in our ring binder journal. And um, I want to make some different kinds of pockets so that it kind of gives you guys an idea of some different things that you can do to make pockets. Some really simple pockets and some really cute pockets and all kinds of fun stuff. So we're just going to play and do this craft with me and just have fun so here we go so basically i just open up my journal and i kind of flip through and decide where i want to pocket so that's what i'm going to do so hang on a second okay so i have this beautiful beautiful vintage um uh, this was from um like an 18 it was in the late 1800s it was like um uh, like a daily devotional um, and it's in German. It's really, really beautiful. I'm going to hold it up so y'all can see it. How pretty is that? So I think I'd like to put a pretty little lace pocket on here. Um, so I'm going to use one of my snippet rolls that I got from Sarah. Um, but before I do that, I had somebody ask me about, um, the, uh, you know, if these would hold up when you punch the holes, you know, in a ring binder, if I had problems with my holes holding up. So I was going to show you a couple of different things that you can do. Um, you can either use like the, um, the hole reinforcers. Let me see if I can grab mine. Okay, so we have these little hole reinforcer stickers. So you can use those. Now, if you don't want the white um, on the you know, the uh, patinaed page, then you can just take your ink and just ink up a, a few of the hole reinforcers on the little sticker piece or the sticker page. And it just kind of grunges it up so it better matches um, the patina on the page. Okay, I'm just going to have to tell y'all, I'm sorry, my brain does not want to function real well today. So that's why I know I'm kind of having problems finding my words. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, I'll just be honest with y'all. I've had a lot going on. Um, I have an uncle who lives in Florida. He's my dad's brother. And he is... Um, He's been battling cancer, um, and so he's down there, and he goes to the VA hospital. He was um, in the military, and he goes to the VA hospital. And anyways, um, he had a problem with his back. He had a really bad problem with his back. And he's, he's had several different times to where he's had to go through chemo treatments for cancer. And the latest episode he had... Um, Okay, so now you've got these hole reinforcers on there, and I put them on both sides because if you put them on both sides, then you've got double the strength, and then you don't have to worry about, I mean, you know, there's still a possibility, um, you know, that your page can get jerked out of the ring binder if you're not careful with it or whatever, but at the same time, you know, uh, just be careful with with your pages when you're flipping them and turning them. I mean, you know, it's it's a handmade book, so you want to treat it tenderly and and give it love <laughs> and not beat it up. So, anyways, um, that's one idea. Now, another thing that you can do, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this same page out, and I'll finish telling y'all the story about my uncle in just a minute. You can take washi tape and just line both sides. So I would put a strip on this side. And then I would put a strip on this side and then punch the holes through that. And that gives it more strength because this washi tape will hold, you know, and give you a, a stronger support here on the edge than the paper. So that's a couple of different things. An even cuter thing you can do, which will be a little bit harder, but you, it can be done. But it will just be a little bit more tedious to do it is you could take, you know, just like a strip of fabric and put on the edge of the page there, and that would give it strength. Now, it'll be hard to kind of punch the holes through. That's the tedious part I was talking about. But you can take a, um, like an X-Acto knife, um, like I did on, uh, what page was it where I put the fabric on it? 
somewhere in here. Yeah, I'll show you. So this page where I put the fabric on, I'm just going to mark my spot where this page goes. Remember when we did this page, when we did the, um, the belly bands? And so I just took this X-Acto knife and I just kind of punched through this fabric. So you can do it that way too. Um, it's all up to you, but that's just some ideas to give you um, that will help you to have better strength, um, you know, where you punch your holes. So anyways, um, where was I with my uncle? Um, I don't remember. Well, anyways, he um, had a tumor that came up in his throat and it closed off 85% of his throat passageway. And so he's been going through chemo treatment for that or radiation. I'm not sure which, you know, it's all different for every cancer patient. So, so anyways, he somehow had hurt his back. He was having a lot of pain in his back. And, um, so they decided that they would do, you know, they did the testing or whatever, and they found that one of his vertebrae was crushed. And so they needed to go in and do surgery to fix that vertebrae because my dad has been down there with him for over a month now. And he said every time he would move, he would just yell, you know, because it hurt. And so um, they decided that they would go in and do surgery to fix the vertebrae in his back. Um, and before I finish the story, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do so that we can craft while I'm telling you the story. So I think what I want to do, this is one of the lace snippets um, that I get from Sarah. And I mean, won't that just be so pretty on that page? And it looks, I love the different colors of the laces um, with the different creams and the whites mixed together. And it just kind of gives it a vintage feel. So I'm going to cut along here right beside this flower to make us a pocket and I'm probably gonna have to fight with these stinking scissors <laughs> but that's okay we'll make it work so anyways um, so they did the surgery on him last week on his back and um, he was in the hospital for a few days because they thought he had a blood clot but so they wanted to just kind of monitor um, everything that was going on with him Okay, I'm going to need to trim a little bit more off the edge over here. Um, I'm trying to not cut this flower off, but I think I can go under that flower petal right there and just trim a little extra off. So anyway, um, I talked to my dad kind of midweek last week, and they were getting ready to bring him home. Well, come to find out, um, the doctor told him that, you know, he really wasn't strong enough to go through any more chemo treatments after the surgery that his body just was not going to be able to manage it. And so they set it up to where hospice would take him home in an ambulance. And that was his decision. He knew, you know, that he was only, he was not going to have long. And so, um, you know, I've been, kind of on the phone with my dad back and forth and trying to decide do I need to go down there you know because my dad is 76 years old and he's down there trying to take care of his dying brother you know and it it's just I'm concerned about my dad as much as I am about my uncle because I don't want this to negatively affect my dad and my dad is such a caretaker and he will just push 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 himself to you know, all of his limits in order to be able to, um, you know, take care of other people. And so I just, you know, I've been kind of battling with that and my car is still broke down or not broke down, but it just, it needs some work on it. I, I couldn't make a trip in my car right now, I guess is what I'm saying. So, you know, I've been trying to figure out how to come up with funds to get that fixed to see if I need to go down there or whatever. So anyways, that's been going on. So my brain is just kind of a little distracted. And then last night, um, I got a text from, um, my sister and I have an uncle that's on my mother's side of the family 
who um, years ago he got lung cancer and he beat it. Um, but he's been having some motor school problems and some speech problems. And so they took him into the hospital and they did an MRI and they found, um, well, I was told last night it was four tumors on his brain, um, one the size of a lump on his cerebellum. And, um, so they were trying to decide if they were going to be able to do surgery, but the biggest issue as far as the family was concerned, not that it wasn't that he was sick, but they were not going to let anyone stay with him once they admitted him into a room, which was, you know, because of COVID, this nasty, ugly stuff. And um, so, uh, see, isn't that pretty? Doesn't that look so pretty up against that? It's something simple and easy. I mean, you can grab these from Sarah's shop, and they make the prettiest pockets. So we're going to go ahead and add this one in. I know I'm running my mouth a lot. I'm so sorry. I guess I just wanted you guys to kind of know where I'm at, why I'm kind of being a little bit of a dingbat today. So, <laughs> so anyways, um, they, um, I got an update just a little while ago, um, about him and, um, it turns out that they have found, now we're going to look through the journal and find us another spot for another pocket. So while I run my mouth, we can do that. <laughs> um, so they have found four tumors, no, eight tumors instead of four. And so they've decided that they're going to do, they gave him two options. They could do radiation and give him about a year to live, or he could do the surgery and do a more aggressive approach. And it would be a longer recovery time. It would be harder on him, but it would give him a chance to live longer and so of course he has chosen that option versus only having a year left to live so that's where I am that's what's going on and so if I seem a little bit dingy that's probably why because I just have those you know family members heavy on my heart and so <laughs> I apologize if um if I'm a little bit out of it while we're doing this but we're going to try and have fun um and um I'm it, waiting on my daughter and the grandbabies to get here. Um, my daughter is going to start working with me in the Etsy business. Now I keep flipping back and forth on this because I'm trying to decide, I want to cover this page and I'm trying to decide, I think I would like to make it like a full size pocket. Yes, let's do that. Let's make us a full size pocket right here. Okay. That decision was made easily. Let me grab um, what I want to make the pocket out of, and I'll be right back. Just one second. Okay. Um, so, anyways, that's where I'm at with, with my family. So, if y'all could just kind of pray um, for them and for the family members that it is affecting. So, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to put a damper on the day or on the video. I'm not trying to tell you all my problems just trying to explain to you a little bit about where I am. So just bear with me if I'm um, more of a dingbat than usual. <laughs> okay, so I have this um, beautiful image. It's a vintage 1929 Good Housekeeping magazine cover. Um, and so I think what I would like to do is cut this out and ink it up a little bit, put it on some fabric, some cute fabric, and then we'll make a pocket out of that. So let's do that. So we're just going to go ahead. I'm going to scoot the journal out of the way and grab my trimmer here. I think this will be super, super cute as a pocket. And it'll cover up, you know, this the not so pretty part of the page. So we'll kind of get two birds in one stone, so to speak. Okay. Here we go. Whoops. And I, when I originally printed this, I printed it on um, photo paper uh, because you get a brighter image. Um, but it's a glossy photo paper. I'm going to, I think I'm probably going to try and order some matte photo paper or a better quality paper that's matte and not glossy, but I really don't mind that it's glossy because once I put the ink on it, which we'll do now, 
So we'll go ahead and just ink up the edges and I'm just gonna knock off some of the gloss and some of the white with my ink and just kind of grunge it up a little bit um, and give it that vintage look. Now it's a little bit harder to ink on the photo paper, as you can tell. Your ink's not as bright. Um, it doesn't take the ink as brightly as it does on, you know, regular, like that kind of paper. But it still does the trick. So we're gonna go for it. I'm just gonna ink around the edges at first and then I'm gonna lay it down here and I'm gonna get some more ink on my ink dauber and we're just gonna kind of, I'm gonna start out here and we're just gonna kind of run this over the page somewhat to just kind of knock back some of the bright white on the image and just kind of grunge it up some. There we go. And I really, I mean, you can tell as, as I'm working with this, if I touch the edges, it kind of, it takes off some of the ink. I wonder how black would look, would work. Let me grab my black ink and let's try that. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a defined edge with the, oh yeah. Yeah, the black's doing good. So I guess what I would do for a future reference is I would ink in the middle first with the kind of the brown ink and then ink the edges um, with the black. There we go. All right, so now we have to decide what kind of fabric we want to put this on um, to add it to the page. So hang on and let me, let me grab some fabric. Okay, so I think a red fabric will look good underneath this. So what I need to do is measure this fabric on top of my page because I want to be able to cover the whole page. So while I'm doing this, I wanted to let you guys know, I know that I talked in my last video or the one before that about doing farm kits. Um, and I said that if y'all wanted me to, I would work on those this week. Um, so I will try to work on them this week because I've had several people who want them. Um, but if I can't get to them this week, just bear with me. It's just all according to what happens with my uncles and, and what we have going on and all of that good stuff. Um, I actually think I might just want to tear this right here and then kind of fit it this way on there. Um, so anyways, I will try to work on the kits. It's I just don't know for sure if I'll be able to get them done this week. I think that's that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I will work on them as soon as I can. Y'all just bear with me on them. Okay, so I'm just going to take some of the strings off on the edges just to kind of give it that shabby, tattered look a little bit go that's wanting to fold on me but that's okay we'll get it pulled out okay so I'm gonna bring this over and even though it doesn't cover the whole page it still covers enough of it to give you you know what you're looking for which is a pretty background for your picture so how cute is that? And won't that be an adorable little pocket? I think it might be a little bit too long on this side. So we might need to cut just a little bit more off of our fabric. So let's do that. I think I'm gonna cut it about right there and just rip it again. And then you got a cute little strip for like a tag topper or, you know, you can make a little ruffle out of it or something. All right. Okay. So, yeah, my daughter and the grandbabies are coming 
this afternoon she's going to start working on the etsy no not etsy the ebay business there's too many e's it confuses me <laughs> um but yeah so we're gonna work on the ebay business and um get some things posted and get some things posted on marketplace so i thought i would try and get a video in before they get here it's a little bit hard trying to split my time between the two businesses but that's okay all right so i think i'm going to put just a little bit of glue in the center of the um picture just to kind of hold it while um i get ready to sew it so i'm not going to put a whole lot just a very little bit just enough to keep it in place while while i run it through the sewing machine so we're just going to do that little bit like that Okay, and then I really like that. So I'm just going to lay that down into the fabric and just kind of flatten it out a little bit so we don't get any wrinkles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not going to do it on camera, um, but I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch around the picture first to secure it to the fabric. And then I'm going to put the fabric down and I'm gonna stitch around it to make it a pocket. And I think I'm gonna make it a side pocket so I'll leave this side open. Wouldn't it be pretty to put some lace over here? Hmm, let's look at that. Let me see if I can find some cute lace in here. Ooh, oh, I have this lace. Is it too big? Is that too much? I think it is, I think we need like a thinner um, just a little thin piece of lace. Oh, here we go. Let's try this one and see what that'll look like. I don't know. I honestly think it might be too much. I wish y'all could talk to me and tell me if you think that's too much. I don't know. I kind of like that. Hmm. Oh, decisions, decisions. I actually think I like that. I think I am going to put the lace just on this one edge over here. So I'm going to just trim off this edge here and even it up some so I can get a good cut. There we go. Trim that one. And then before I sew my pocket on, I think I would like to put some washi here just to kind of knock off, um, you know, these colors from, I just don't think that's an, a beautiful background. <laughs> so uh, let me, um, hang on, I'm going to grab some washi. Okay, look, I found some cute little apple washi, and I think it'll go perfect with them and their little apples. I don't know if that's apples or tomatoes, but we're going to say it's apples. <laughs> so here's what I do when I line the edges with my washi. I just take it all the way up through there, press it in, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Trim that off a little. I didn't do that very good, did I? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Got a little bit off the edge over here. I went crazy with the washi. So we just trim that down a little. Okay. I probably got washi sticking on me. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. <laughs> Okay, so now when you put it here, you know, it kind of hides that ugly dark color. It's not too bad at the top and the bottom, so. All right, hang on. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, stitch it together, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have our pocket stitched on. I had a hard time with it. I'll just go ahead and tell you. I'm fighting with my sewing machine, and <laughs> I think it might just be 
one of those things, you know, where you just have a little bit of a struggle with it. And you can either throw your hands up in the air and say, forget it, I'm not doing this. Or you can battle it out. So, that's what I did. I battled it out. And as y'all can see, I am not the seamstress at all. But I love the imperfections of it. I love the little strings sticking out. I even love that it's a little tiny bit crooked. Yes, I know. Y'all probably already saw that. <laughs> But you know what? All in all, I think it's super cute. And I, I love the image. And I mean, it looks cute in the journal. So, and then you have a pocket inside. So, you can tuck all your goodies in there. I mean, so cute. So, you know what? I'm not going to let it make me have a bad day. I am not a seamstress. I have never been a seamstress. Sewing is not my favorite thing in the world. I, I don't really enjoy it. Um, and I battle with it because, see, these stitches, this is what the bottom is supposed to look like. So, I'm having some problems with my tension or something. I have to call my Aunt Dolly and find out what I'm doing wrong. Or maybe one of y'all can tell me. Why is, I mean, I'm, I am I stitched this on the top. Okay? This is supposed to be a zigzag stitch right here. <laughs> it's just not working that way for me. So, I even changed out my thread. I had to take it apart. Anyway. <laughs> A labor of love goes into this pocket. <laughs> and then we just move on to the next pocket. So, um, I did realize that I missed my stitching right here. So, guess what we're going to do? Good old Fabri-Tac. <laughs> or Fabri-Fix. I think they're one and the same. I really don't think there's any difference in the two. If there is, y'all tell me. But I haven't found a difference in the two. I need to wipe off this glue tip. It's got some goopies on there. There we go. Okay, so let's put us just a little bit of glue down. And it still looks like it's stitched on because it has the stitching. It just didn't grab. So, yes, this is my wonderful experience with stitching today. <laughs> but it'll be okay. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. Before I try to turn my page. Otherwise, it's going to stick my pages together. There we go. Okay. So, I think it's good and dry. And now, um, we're going to do some more pockets. I'm probably going to cut this video here. Um, well, I am going to cover this page. So, um, you've seen me cover the pages, though. So, I'll just do that off camera. But we'll come back and we'll do some more pockets. I have some fabric pockets. I have some quilty pockets. Some beautiful quilty pockets. We're going to do a denim pocket. We're going to do some lacy pockets. We're going to do um, some pockets and tucks with some of my quilty. This is from my scrap fabrics that I had that I just kind of quilted on a piece of muslin and made and then I cut them out. So it's kind of like a fabric collage that I did a long time ago. Um, so if you guys want to see that video, just check back through my videos. I'll try to link it in the description box below so you can see it. Um, so anyways, um, that is, I know we only got two pockets made, but I ran my mouth. <laughs> Y'all know me, I ran my mouth. But we'll come back in the next video and we'll make some more pockets. And I'll tell you the story about what happened to my husband's job. <laughs> yes, it's been a crazy, crazy month of September, but that's just par for the course for 2020, right? <laughs> so anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this craft with me. I hope y'all are having a great day. I hope y'all are having fun crafting along with me. Hope you're making a ring, ring binder journal. <laughs> I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead. I love y'all real big. Big hugs.